Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and today it's the Biggest Show of Stars for 61 Fall Edition. Yep, still another traveling caravan package tour from the early 60s under the BSOS banner. Biggest Show of Stars. What an outfit that was. What a great promoting crew they did in the 60s and 50s. On this poster you've got 12 musical acts and it's an original cardboard vintage concert poster measuring give or take 17 by 23 inches. And it is a tour blank and I've got another one to show you later on. As you know that means the color portion printed ahead of time and the white box up top left blank and then stripped in date by date. So for this one we do have the Municipal Auditorium in San Antonio, Texas. Well, wow. Wednesday, October 4th. And this printing, by the way, this blue printing, all in globe posters, very distinct blue block lettering. And it continues to say, one show only, 8 p.m. until, and then it's left blank, so obviously no, no firm stop time. And then some unusual seat locations given. You don't usually see this on a pop or an R&B poster or anything. Orchestra box, three and a half dollars. Orchestra circle, two dollars and seventy-five cents and then balcony two dollars, including taxes. And then they say tickets on sale at the Alamo Piano Company. Well, of course, there in San Antonio there was probably Alamo everything, right? From Chinese cleaners to cafes and stuff. Here you have the Piano Company. And tickets also on sale at the Life Saver Grill. And then you've got the permanent color portion, you know, this poster below the venue box, which um, we're pretty sure stayed, I'm pretty sure, stayed constant throughout the entire tour. And uh, let me come in for a little closer look. There it says at the top, Super Enterprises, Inc. present the biggest show of stars for 61 Fall Edition. Sorry about the redundancy. <laughs> now notice how that stripe is yellow and black, although the yellow is a little bit dialed back because of sunlight over the years, but it was printed in pretty strong yellow. So that stripe is yellow and black. The next two lines of musicians, day glow orange and black, and a little bit bigger in size. Um, by the way, white was also a constant element, being of course the color of the cardboard. The next two lines are yellow and black again, lines of musicians. And the final strip at the bottom, complete with a photo of a musician, is day glow orange and black. So you have them alternating back and forth. and. It's kind of neat, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to overlook patterns like this, and in fact, I had for years, if not decades, until I sat down to video blog this poster, and then it was like, oh, wow, hmm, look at that. So, it'd be so awesome to interview an old, you know, designer for Globe or something and find out how they thought of these things and what their thinking was, you know. Okay, so musically, the top row starts with Brooke Benton and the biggest pop hit of his career. Nice, Bull Weevil song was number two this summer, and it was also number two R&B and stayed there on that chart for a full month. Then you've got the platters. I can come in closer. The platters top center there. Love that photo. Really a nice picture of the legendary 50s rock and roll act. But the song title, I'll Never Smile Again, kind of funny. I immediately thought of Frank Sinatra because Frank and Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra had a number one hit with it in 1940, so it turns up a lot on Sinatra compilations and stuff. The Platters barely managed to eke it into the R&B Top 20. Then you've got Del Shannon on there with the song Hats Off to Larry. Well, 1961 was Del's rookie year and his biggest year ever on the charts. It started off with the number one smash, Runaway, in the spring, and then Hats Off to Larry was top five in the summertime. Then you've got the second row there, starting off with D. Clark, and it says Raindrops. Well, that was by far his biggest pop hit. Number two pop this spring, nice. And number three, R&B. And in the dead center there, you have the legendary Drifters with another great photo. Boy, between the Platters and the Drifters, there's just two exemplary pictures right down the middle of this poster. And the song title given is Please Stay. Well, that was their current, pretty inconsequential charting single. But, you know, over the next three years, the Drifters would produce Up on the Roof, On Broadway, and Under the Boardwalk. Literally in 62, 3, and 4. So they had a lot of juice left in them. And then you've got Bruce Springsteen's hero, Gary U.S. Bonds. He was as hot right now as anyone on this poster. 
Quarter to Three is the song title given. That was his biggest hit, and it was a number one pop record this summer. Then you've got the third row of musicians, and starting the black and yellow coloring here. First we have Gene McDaniels, and Gene had a top five pop hit this spring with a hundred pounds of clay. We all know that one. He had another top five pop hit this fall with Tower of Strength. So it was a good year for him, but in between those two was a stiff single called A Tear. <laughs> and there it is on the poster, so such is the timing when these things are designed and printed. Next over you've got the Jarmels on there with no picture, so that's a shame. And you've got the record A Little Bit of Soap, which was a hit for them this summer and the only charting record they ever had. Next to them you've got Curtis Lee, also a one-hit wonder, with Pretty Little Angel Eyes, a top ten pop hit this summer. And the final row then, we go to that yellow oval and you can see Phil Upchurch's name also without a photograph, darn it, and that's kind of a shame because he became an amazing session guitarist. Boy, Phil worked with B.B. King, Dizzy Gillespie, Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, John Lee Hooker, Cat Stevens, Quincy Jones, and Michael Jackson. What a resume. But this summer, 61, he had his one charting record under his own name. And it was actually the Philip Upchurch combo. And that was You Can't Sit Down, Part 2, given here on the poster. Top 30 pop, sold a million copies, and got him a gold disc. But we know it better these days by the Dovell's version, uh, uh, which went to number three pop a couple of years later. And then you've got in the center there the Cleftones. They enjoyed mostly R&B chart success. Heart and Soul was a top ten for them this summer. And then in the lower right corner, the yellow oval, Harold Cromer is given as the MC. Now some might look at that and think that's his picture there, but no, that photograph is of Paul Williams and his Show of Stars Orchestra. Don't forget Williams, for heaven's sake, once had a number one record for three months. <laughs> That's right. Boy, I'll tell you, the Hucklebuck topped the R&B charts in 1949 for 14 weeks. Wow. And then in the very bottom center, probably can't see it, but in the white margin it does say Globe Poster of Baltimore. So now, as promised, let's take a quick look at this poster from a couple of other cities. Just three days later, in Wichita, Kansas, and two shows on this date, 7 and 9.30 p.m. And by the way, you can really see on this example how pronounced the yellow is when it was first printed. Now, let's pedal backwards three and a half weeks, and we wind up on September 13th, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, look at that. And as I come in on the venue box, interestingly how no time of the show is given. You know, different local promoters just wanted different things up there in the venue box. By the way, the low ticket price of two dollars on this was constant on all of the posters that I'm showing you. Okay, so let's just jump ahead four days from this one, just four days afterwards, and uh, where's my picture? I had a picture of that one. I, I don't know where it is, so I guess, I guess I'll just show you the real poster. <laughs> How's that? Ta-da! Right? Oh man, it's always nice when you can do that. Yep, here it is, Sunday, September 17th, okay, at the Montreal Forum in Canada. And I'll come in closer for you there. You know, just like, um, you, you're back to two shows again on this date, just like in Wichita, but this time they split them apart into a matinee and evening show. So you can see the times on there, 2.30 in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night. Well, the biggest show of stars for 1961, the fall edition. Well, even, even though a few of the shows, as we can see here, fell in the late summertime. <laughs> Not quite the fall. Oh, thanks a lot. Great fun to show you this stuff. Really appreciate your time. Hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And uh, thanks for dropping by. We'll see you again for something fun soon. Okay, bye-bye.